Nightcast. Stephen Lloyd Gilbert brings you the current news from the world today and how it relates to Bible prophecy. Understanding the end time events leading to the peaceful world tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Lloyd Gilbert. Greetings, friends, and welcome to this June 12, 2014 edition of Nightcast. In our opening story tonight, President Obama says his government is looking at all options, including military action, to help Iraq fight Islamist militants. Iraq, as a country, is in danger of being torn apart. Militiamen from the Shia majority have been fighting the Sunni forces of ISIS, an al-Qaeda splinter group seizing whole swathes of Iraq. The Baghdad government has appealed for help. Iran said it was considering it, and so too is President Obama, but with conditions. There will be some short-term, immediate things that need to be done militarily. Uh, and, you know, our national security team is looking at all the options. But this should be also a wake-up call for the Iraqi government. There has to be a political component to this. Unmanned Reaper drones could be deployed. Iraq also wants U.S. airstrikes, helicopters, shared intelligence. But in this complex fight, Washington says there will be no U.S. boots on the ground. Both Syria and Iraq are experiencing violent insurgencies, increasingly sectarian, mostly between Sunni and Shia Muslims. The Sunnis, who used to rule Iraq, are concentrated in the north and the west, and they now feel dispossessed. ISIS is a fanatical Sunni group present in both Iraq and Syria. In Iraq, it's been helped by that Sunni resentment against the government. In January, their fighters took the town of Fallujah. This month, they've taken Mosul, Iraq's second city. And from there, they've pushed south to take Tikrit. All of this could be the genesis of a new Islamist mini-state right in the heart of the Middle East. This is the most serious situation we have faced in Iraq. The integrity of Iraq is in question. The security of the region is in question. British troops spent eight years in Iraq after the controversial US-led invasion of 2003. Will they now be heading back? Absolutely not, says the government. We will not be getting involved militarily. Uh, we will support the United States in anything that they decide to do. We're in consultation with them. But I stress again that it is for the Iraqi leadership primarily to respond to this. This is a democratic country with an elected government with considerable resources. Iraq does need urgent help. This government video belies the fact Iraq's army simply ran away from the fighters of ISIS. But if the fight comes to the capital, ISIS may well find it's overreached itself. Frank Gardner, BBC News. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Frank Gardner. Uh, President Obama's remarks in this video, friends, came after the cities of Mosul and Tikrit fell to Sunni, Islamists, uh, Sunni Islamists' insurgents during a lightning advance. And President Obama offering to do drone strikes, no, no boots on the ground, but drone strikes, leads into our next story out of Pakistan where U.S. drones hit militants in Pakistan's North Waziristan. It's not just the U.S., but most of Pakistan is concerned about what's happening in tribal areas. Uh, about these strikes, what we know, uh, whatever we know is through official sources because access to area is very difficult. Uh, they're saying 16 militants were killed. At least four of them were Uzbek militants. Uh, these uh, strikes were launched near the town of Miramsha, close to the Afghan border. Now, if you recall, the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan uh, said it sent those 10 fighters who launched this uh, lengthy gun battle uh, at Karachi airport just a few days ago. Uh, and it looks like the army is contemplating some kind of operation there. Uh, and the U.S. has now been allowed to carry out drone strikes again. And, and what about the ongoing conversation about just who within the Pakistani intelligence forces is supporting which aspects of militant activity? What is the Pakistani press saying on that right now? 
Look, it's complicated. Uh, the army uh, has been uh, carrying out uh, retaliatory strikes in tribal areas. Um, they have also, uh, the government has also talked to local tribal chiefs, given them uh, a deadline of uh, June 20th to evict foreign militants from there. Now, Uzbeks are seen as foreign militants, even though they've been living there for ages. They speak local language. Uh, they have married into local tribes. Uh, but the government has given that warning. Uh, and people in that part of uh, tribal areas are trying to move out. They fear there will be an operation. They already li live in perpetual fear because of drones. Um, but they, it seems like something might happen in, in the next few, uh, few weeks. And pressure is growing on the government of uh, the Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to do something because his, he wanted to hold peace talks. That effort didn't lead anywhere. Okay, we want to thank BBC's Shahzeb Jalani in Islamabad for that explanation. Friends, in our next video, the militant Islamist group, which has taken control of two key cities in northern Iraq, says it has now ordered its troops to attack Baghdad. There are reports that some of its forces are now just 15 miles from the capital. Meanwhile, Iraqi Kurds are reported to have taken the northern oil city of Kirkuk. Nick Childs reports. The Sunni militants have swept through northern Iraq with extraordinary speed. Burning vehicles marked their advance on Kirkuk, just 80 miles from Baghdad. They conquered Iraq's second city, Mosul, earlier this week, quickly overcoming the limited resistance. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This was an army base Allahu nearby, Allahu now Allahu overrun by insurgents, not a soldier in sight. Iraq's Prime Minister, though, is pledging to fight back. We are dealing with the situation. We are not going to allow this to carry on, regardless of the price. We are getting ready. We are organizing. The militants themselves are an al-Qaeda splinter group fighting in both Iraq and Syria. Their aim, the creation of a single Islamic state stretching down to Israel and North Africa. Britain and the U.S. have ruled out military intervention, but Washington is promising more support for Iraqi forces. You can expect that we will provide additional assistance to the Iraqi government uh, to combat the threat from ISIL, but I'm not in a position to outline that further at this point. Half a million people have fled to Kurdish-controlled Iraq, and for many, it's been a desperate journey. Abu Ibrahim says he rescued these children when their father was killed. Iraq's post-war stability has always been precarious, but now the country appears on the verge of a grave and bloody new chapter. Richard Lister, BBC News. Friends, Iraq could be facing a breakup as a result of an insurgency by Islamist militants, as you can tell from these videos we've been playing. Uh, the, and this uh, warning comes from the country's former prime minister that uh, it could be breaking up, Ayad al-Lawi, who was prime minister of Iraq's transitional government between 2004 and 2005, told BBC's Newsnight that the crisis was the worst he had seen in the country for 30 years. He also warned that military intervention by the United States could act as fuel to the fire in the conflict. Is there a real feeling there that uh, you are facing the breakup of the country? Well, uh, this is a, a possibility. I hope uh, it should be a remote possibility if uh, the Iraqis cannot pull together and cannot form a, a, a unity government uh, and get out of the current mess. Otherwise, uh, my fear is that potentially, yes, uh, danger do exist on uh, dividing the country. Uh, is this the worst you've seen in 30 years of Iraqi politics, the worst in terms of holding the country together? Definitely is the worst. Uh, it's, it's quite dangerous. We have been... Uh, 
losing around a thousand uh, Iraqis uh, per month for the last year or so, uh, killed by terrorist uh, groups. Unfortunately, the government was not able to control this. Uh, definitely, the political process itself is not an inclusive political process. It has been uh, built on sectarian uh, levels and sectarian drive. And this has been quite uh, painful to the country. So, when you hear that President Obama does not rule out military intervention, not boots on the ground, but military intervention, uh, does that fill you with hope or more concern? Well, I'm more concerned. Uh, I think this would add fuel to the, to the fire, unfortunately. I know that the United States have lost uh, its capabilities in, in Iraq and uh, indeed in the Middle East, the greater Middle East. And we know that uh, there is no clarity in the policy where uh, the uh, American policy is heading in the greater Middle East. We know the peace process is being uh, stagnant now between the Arabs and Israelis. Uh, Afghanistan, uh, North of Africa, Horn of Africa, mm -hmm. Syria. There is a, 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 an increased activities of Al-Qaeda. And, and, and indeed now it's in Iraq. Uh, but, if, but if you were to stop this kind of regional conflict, because it is, as you say, a regional conflict, if there was to be a pull together in Iraq itself, Hillary Clinton has said that Maliki needs to be more inclusive, something, of course, that you uh, agree with. And then we heard uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Robert Fry saying that actually the Sunnis themselves need to be divided off because, of course, not all Sunnis are part of any kind of extremist uh, grouping. How do you reconcile? Do you have a role to play? Are you going back? I am going back in two days' time. Uh, in fact, tomorrow I'm going back. Uh, the, 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 uh, the problem of Sunnis and Shia is, is an oversimplification. Uh, never existed in Iraq this problem before. Yes, there are pockets, definitely who do behave in a sectarian way. But by and large, the Iraqi people rejected and never thought of along the sectarian lines. Uh, but what we have is a fight between extremism and moderation throughout the greater Middle East, not only in Iraq. And unfortunately, there are people within the Sunni bloc who are extremists. And likewise, in the Shi'i group, also we have extremism. Uh, likewise, in the Kurdish, by the way, uh, uh, component, we have extremism. Uh, we have, likewise, uh, moderation, and I think this conflict is widespread throughout the, the greater Middle East. And I believe that when the Americans invaded Iraq, unfortunately, they dismantled the state of Iraq, not only overthrew the, the regime of Saddam Hussein, but the whole state was dismantled. Uh. And, and they wanted to create a new state, but they failed in doing so because they had no post-conflict policy. Okay, well, kind of, we're going to cut on out right there. Kind of got into a uh, discussion about <laughs> a desire for a, a Palestinian state. And, of course, this, this uh, thing that's happening now in Iraq, uh, the goal of these insurgents will is to create a huge Palestinian state that will include Israel, where they just take it, you know. And um, now they've captured Iraq's second city of Mosul. Here is a look, friends, at why a nice little video put together by Michael Hirsch. I don't have the license for the music, though, so I'm going to have to play this without the music part of it. But still, this is uh, educationally beneficial. It shows, it's, it gives us a little look at why the fall of Mosul is significant for Iraq and the government of Prime Minister Nuri Maliki. This is a little 60-second uh, video, again, produced by Michael Hirsch. Like I said, uh, this is second. This is Iraq's second city. It's a very important city and the largest to fall to militants.
It's a key trading post close to Syria. People have fled the city. About 500,000 people have fled so far. This raises concerns of a refugee crisis, and the Kurdish people in the northern part of Iraq are already making international pleas for help. Mosul's fall brings the question of uh, government control into question. Okay, and that's, uh, all right, let's come back out of that. Oh, here we are, okay. That's, uh, again, a little 60-second video produced by Michael Hurst. Friends, we're good. that's uh, all I have for you tonight, and except I'm going to close with something I think you'll enjoy seeing. Um, I want to th before I go to this last video, this is one you'll I believe you'll enjoy. This we're going to close with something very light. I want to thank those of you who have been praying for my health condition, uh, cold, congestion, and all of that. I got some relief shortly before. I still have just a little bit of, of a nasal congestion problem, but amazingly, a lot of it lifted just before showtime. Now, I did do uh, a lot more resting today than I might normally. When did I do that? Well, I didn't work on the program as much anyway, as much today, and it's, we're a little shorter tonight because of that. But with what's happening, I think we'll leave the emphasis on the Iraq situation for tonight, and this is Thursday night, so God willing, we'll plan to be back Sunday night. We don't do a program on Friday night or Saturday night, but uh, we'll be back, maybe have a little longer program Sunday night, depending on what happens. But uh, here's what I want to close with, friends. George W. Bush had his 90th birthday. He marked it today. He turned 90, 90 years old. That's, that's quite a benchmark. He marked his birthday with a parachute jump. Let's take a look at it. This is how former U.S. President George H.W. Bush marked his 90th birthday. The 41st president made the tandem parachute jump harnessed to a retired member of the U.S. Army's parachute team. It's not the first time he celebrated a birthday like this. When he turned 85, he also went skydiving. This was actually his eighth jump altogether. The first was when his plane was shot down over the Pacific during the Second World War. Mr. Bush, who can no longer use his legs, made the jump near his summer home in Maine. Verity Wild, BBC News. Verity, Verity Wild, you put together some very interesting re video reports. I appreciate this one. The 41st president jumped out of a helicopter near his family home in in uh, Maine and uh, former president of the United States uh, how do you say his whole you gotta say his whole name H.W. George Bush and uh, friends that's it for I uh, actually I said that backward it's supposed to be George H.W. Bush that's what you're supposed to say the former president Bush's name Friends, thank you for joining me tonight for this Thursday night report. As I mentioned a moment ago, God willing and the creek don't rise, we'll be back again Sunday evening with our next nightcast, news from the day related to the Bible and prophecy. We will be on, on another channel this weekend. For those of you who follow me there, just look from our homepage for the Sabbath service channel at the Times posted on our, on our homepage on cogtv.org. Friends, until next time, your host, Stephen Lloyd Gilbreth, saying so long, friends. You have been watching Nightcast with Stephen Lloyd Gilbreth. Nightcast can be seen Sunday through Thursday nights here on COGTV.org. Tonight's program is also available anytime on demand in the COGTV.org video archive. <laughs>